Hey guys, Mr. P. In this video, we're going to discuss differences among eukaryotic cells, specifically understanding A228, which is differences in eukaryotic cell structure between animals, fungi, and plants. We're going to include the presence and composition of cell walls, differences in the size and function of the vacuoles, the presence of chloroplasts and other plastids, and the presence of centriole cilia and flagella. So the first thing we need to do when discussing this particular understanding is we have to understand what the domain eukarya really entails. It includes all organisms that belong to all of the groups of organisms that would be fungus or fungi, the plants, and then a lot of the other animals including birds, fish, mammals, amphibians, insects, reptiles, and the arachnids. All of these groups of organisms would belong to domain eukarya, which means they are multicellular organisms that are composed of eukaryotic cells. So when we begin to talk about the differences between the eukaryotic cells that make up the organisms within these groups, we need to understand that all of these are composed of eukaryotic cells, and so the basic architecture of the cell is the same, but there are some key differences within them. So the first thing we need to understand is that there are, in fact, features that are common to all eukaryotes. It doesn't matter if they are reptiles, amphibians, fungus, plants, or birds. All of them have several structures in common. Those structures would be the nucleus. The fact that they are eukaryotes means that their cells contain a nucleus. The nucleus would therefore contain all of the structures within the nucleus, like the nuclear envelope, the nucleolus, the chromatin, and the nuclear pores. However, all eukaryotes do contain ribosomes as well, and all ribosomes that eukaryotes contain would be the ADS ribosome version. All eukaryotes have rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Both the rough and smooth would produce the protein and lipid products that all eukaryotes need. All eukaryotes are going to contain the Golgi apparatus as well. They're going to contain secretory vesicles and vesicles in general. Some, as you'll see in later slides, contain different types of vesicles and vacuoles, but for the most part, all eukaryotes contain secretory vesicles. They're going to contain lysosomes as well, mitochondria, and the microtubules, in addition to the plasma membrane and cytoplasm. Now, when we begin to talk about differences between plants, animals, and fungi, like the understanding says, there are a variety of key differences that you have to know. For the first one, the cell wall. Whether the cell wall is present or not is a difference. You will notice that in fungus, there is a cell wall present. Just like in plants, there is a cell wall present, and in animals, there is not. Animals like mammals, humans, or birds, reptiles, amphibians, all of those animals would not have a cell wall. But fungus and plants do have a cell wall. Fungus cell walls are composed of chitin, and plant cell walls are composed of cellulose, so there is a difference. In addition to the cell wall difference, there is a difference among the plastids that a cell can contain. Now you'll notice that plants are the only eukaryotic cells that contain plastids. One of the most common plastids that people know about would be the chloroplast. Chloroplast is a structure found in plant cells only that allow them to photosynthesize, i.e make glucose from light and carbon dioxide. In fungus, plastids will be absent, and in animals, they will be absent as well. There are a variety of plastids that plant cells contain, like I said, most notably the chloroplast, but there are some other plastids like chromoplast and leucoplast that allow them to function like a normal plant cell. Vacuoles are a structure that is found in all eukaryotic cells. However, there are some key differences between the types and sizes of vacuoles found within these three. Fungus is going to contain vacuoles that are generally small and numerous with many unique functions, whereas the plant is going to have a large central vacuole for the storage of carbohydrates and the storage of water. Vacuole can be found here in a plant cell. Again, this structure on the screen is a plant cell, and so you can see that there is a large central vacuole in the middle. It allows for the storage of carbohydrates and water, which again helps to build turgor pressure as the cell vacuole pushes out on the cell membrane and then ultimately out on the cell wall. In animals, vacuoles are generally small as well. There are a number of them, and they have, just like in the fungus cell, many unique functions as well. Carbohydrate storage, all cells have the ability to store carbohydrates. However, there are differences in the type of carbohydrate that these three will store. 
fungus and animal cells will store their car carbohydrates in the form of glycogen, whereas the plant is going to store its carbohydrate in the form of starch. So fungus and animals will store their polysaccharides in the form of glycogen, and plants will store its polysaccharide in the form of starch. And the cell shape, you'll notice that this shape of cell on this particular screen is a plant cell, and so it is going to be associated with the cell wall, and that's going to result in a fixed or often angular shape. You'll see that it is pretty angular. It has angles and therefore creates more of a box type or a rectangle type shape. The fungus has a cell wall, but it is a chitinous cell wall, and so it's going to have a degree of flexibility, which is different than the cellulose-based cell wall of the plant. The fungus cell wall is going to allow support, but it's also going to add some flexibility, and so therefore it will give a variety of shapes to that particular fungi cells. Plant cells' shape is fairly fixed, and then because animal cells completely lack the cell wall, they're going to have the most flexibility, and therefore are likely to be more of a rounded shape. And then cilia and flagella. Cilia and flagella give the cells the ability to move. Fungus may have cilia or flagella, but do not have associated basal bodies. Basal bodies are the way that those particular structures are anchored. Plants usually do not contain cilia or flagella, and that's because plant cells are typically less mobile than the fungus and animal cells. And because animal cells are typically the most mobile, they may have cilia and flagella as well and they, unlike the fungus, will have those cilia and flagella structures associated with basal bodies, which again is how they are particularly structured. Centrioles are structures that allow cell division to take place more efficiently. These structures, the centrioles, are going to be associated with the spindle fibers in order to produce the centrosome. Plants and fungus typically do not have those centrioles, but they do have centrosomes. Centrosomes are going to be the microtubules and the spindle fibers that allow the cell to split itself during normal cell division. Animal cells, unlike the other two, will possess the centrioles and therefore have a more elaborate centrosome, but most of this is because animal cells are going to produce a cleavage furrow and therefore split via cytokinesis, which is a little different than the way the fungus and plant cells have to split because, again, those two have cell walls and the animal cell does not. So a little bit of structure differences between the plant, fungus, and animals. If we focus on the fungus for a little bit more and we look at a particular cell within the class of organisms called fungus, you will see that they have a variety of structures that are similar to all of the other eukaryotic cells. But like we said, the key differences between fungus and plants and animals would be that fungus has a chitinous cell wall and they therefore have storage vacuoles that are numerous and can store water and cause turgor pressure against the cell wall. The storage vacuole in a fungus cell is substantially smaller than the storage vacuole in a plant cell, but it does have a chitinous cell wall unlike the animal cell. Plastids absent and they are non-photosynthetic. They are heterotrophic or saprotrophic, which means they are a decomposer and they do consume other organisms unlike plants. Plants are going to have a cell wall. They're going to be composed of cellulose. They're going to give the cell a very rigid shape and they're going to have plastids present like chloroplast. They have a large central vacuole which is going to store water and carbohydrates. It's also going to push out from the central vacuole as they store water which is going to cause turgor pressure as well. These are photosynthetic and autotrophic meaning they produce their own food. They are non-heterotrophic. They do not decompose unlike the fungus. And the last organisms would be the animals. These are going to be cells that do not contain the cell wall. You can see these are more rounded shape. They are not as rigid. They have cilium or flagella, which allows them to move. Those cilia and flagella structures would be associated with basal bodies as well. They do have secretory vesicles and vacuoles. Those vesicles and vacuoles are going to be numerous and they do not cause turgor pressure because of the fact that these cells do not have a cell wall. They have centrioles and therefore will produce the centriole-based centrosome, which is going to allow these particular types of cells to divide more efficiently. And again, cell wall is absent. These cells do not have plastids. They are non-photosynthetic. They are heterotrophic and the cells take on a round shape because of the fact that they lack the cell wall. These are the different types of organisms, plants, fungus, and animals that you need to know in order to understand this particular understanding. 
That's it for this video. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a question in the comments. See ya.